How to overcome needy behaviors and obsessive thoughts after a breakup. I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad that you're watching this video because it can completely transform your breakup recovery. Most individuals that are caught in this dynamic of obsessive thoughts and needy behavior are not fully aware of their actions and their mindset. They know in theory that they should not beg or plead or that they should not overwhelm their ex with messages, attention, or outreach of different kinds, but they don't have the sense of self-awareness to actually realize that they are caught up in this dynamic and that they're pushing their ex further and further away. The very fact that you are watching this video shows that you are aware that this dynamic could play out in your situation or that it is currently playing out in your situation and you are doing something about it. And I would like to salute you for that because now you can course correct. If you continue down this path, the odds of you getting back with the person that you love are very low. But if you're able to catch yourself, to take a step back, to give yourself some breathing room and to actually implement specific steps to get a hold of your negative emotions and to be in a more positive mindset, then everything can be possible. And you can even find yourself in a dynamic where your ex is chasing you. Yes, a dynamic where your ex will be chasing you. And that may sound crazy based on where things stand now, but this is a story that has played out over and over and over again throughout the years that I've been doing this work. Ultimately, your sense of identity and your sense of well-being and happiness is tied to this one person. You may be also triggered by traumas from past relationships or from your childhood, but you are associating your happiness to the validation and to the love that this one human being is giving you. And you must understand that that is an erroneous thought or belief. The truth is that you do not need this person to complete you. No matter how much you love them, you do not need them. Because then it becomes unhealthy. Then it can lead to codependency. I need you to get to a place of healthy love where you are whole and happy without them and where you choose to be with them, where you choose to have them in your life, but that you do not depend on their validation and love for your sanity, for your well-being. That is the journey that you need to commit yourself to be on. Once you're committed to this, it will inevitably lead to certain choices, actions. You must commit to not obsessively check their social media, taking it one day at a time. Instead, you can focus on doing something that is more proactive, more constructive. It could be journaling, it could be meditation, it could be working out. But you must commit to not obsessively checking up on what they are doing, who they are talking to. You must commit to not talking about them. You must commit to really building a wall so that you give yourself time and space to breathe and to heal. And there are many, many, many ways for you to do that. But first, you must put all the pictures, take the pictures off your wall. You must remove the pictures that you obsessively check on your social media, your computer, or on your phone. Store them in a file, put them away. Take those sentimental items and put them in a box. Be your own ally in this process. Instead of 
only focusing on what you cannot do, it is also important to focus on what you will do, what you can do. And what you can do is nurture healthy friendships. What you can do is to really immerse yourself in things that bring you a sense of value by focusing on activities that help you to think outside of yourself, by being there for others who need you, whether it's children, relatives, pets, or even strangers, you will give yourself the ability to detach from these obsessive thoughts. And you will connect with something that is a lot more meaningful and a lot more deeper and a lot more real. And you, give, you need to give yourself time. You will not always feel this way. And the more you take action and the quicker you are going to be able to be in a better place. I have seen so many individuals all over the world who have been able to overcome those obsessive thoughts and those needy behaviors. And you can too. But you need to believe in yourself. And sometimes you need support. That's where we come in. These videos can only take you so far. You must also act and reflect on that action. And in light of that reflection, figure out the next best steps based on your very situation. You can count on us. I'm here to support you through coaching. And you also have endless amounts of resources that can help you go much, much, much deeper. And the first step could be the private video that you will find in the description of this content. It can really help you to figure out what the next best step is to not just be on the defensive, but to really truly be proactive and to take this process by the horn. You are in a good place. You can do this and good things are ahead. You know that you can also lean on this community through the comment sections. We are here to support you, not just me, but good people all over the world going through similar challenges as well. Much love. Keep fighting the good fight and see you soon.